We can use a computer model to help us deal with the coronavirus. Based on my recent work with equations from the fields of epidemiology and biology, I have some results to share. A pandemic timeline model. The model shows a dynamic and interdependent relationship between individuals who are not infected, those who are infected and able to infect others, and those who are recovering. The key to the model is a number called R sub zero, which is the number of people an infected person will infect. Over time, in reality, as well as in this model, people transition from susceptible to infected to recovering. The importance of the model is that it shows the relationship between R sub zero, the infection rate, and the peak number of infected individuals. Computing that peak number is very important to public policy because in some scenarios, it shows a peak infected population that far exceeds our healthcare system's ability to treat them. Simply stated, a high peak infected population would overwhelm the medical system and leave seriously sick people without care. The remedy is to reduce R sub zero, the infection rate. One way to reduce R sub zero is to ask everyone to stay at home, practice social distancing, and take other antiseptic measures. The present measures will save lives because a high peak infection rate would overwhelm the medical system and leave sick people without proper care. A smaller R sub zero creates a smaller peak infection rate so that medical care can remain available. The result for the economy is less desirable. It means a smaller workforce, many obliged to work from home, and less economic growth for a year or more. Scientists are racing to create a vaccine, and if this effort succeeds, the stay-at-home strategy is the best way to minimize the infection rate until everyone can be vaccinated. In the longer term, people need to understand that the coronavirus isn't going away. Unlike the smallpox virus, which was famously eradicated, the coronavirus has an animal host, bats, so it cannot be extinguished. We will need to remain vigilant and immunized in perpetuity. Let's take a look at the big picture. What caused the coronavirus pandemic? Some may try to claim the cause was an open air market in China where people and animals mingle, but that is both wrong and racist. The virus could have jumped from between species anywhere, as demonstrated by the HIV virus responsible for AIDS. No, the real cause of the pandemic is well understood among scientists. It results from a combination of world overpopulation, crowded cities, and air travel. And because the root cause results from our preferences, we can expect to see many future pandemics that take advantage of our bad choices. Some may ask, is overpopulation really a choice? Well, that depends. It depends on whether individuals have the right to choose. And the choice must be an individual one. Any number of stupid and tragic governmental programs show that the population issue must turn on the choices of educated individuals. Studies show that in places where women have the right to choose, educated women choose to have smaller families. Their children tend to be better educated, healthier, and grow up appreciating the importance of individual choice and freedom. I want to close this video by honoring Dr. Li Wen Young, a brave physician from Wuhan, China, who was one of the first to recognize the danger posed by the coronavirus. Dr. Li tried to alert the public, but was silenced by local authorities who refused to believe his claims and who accused him of spreading rumors. After treating the first wave of coronavirus victims, Dr. Lee contracted the disease and passed away at age 34. His wife will deliver their second child in June. Thanks for watching and stay healthy.